using the vehicle to calculate energy. I think this is my favorite portion of, of this presentation because the, the torque question I get so often, and I don't have a lot of good answers. So when we're calculating energy, um, you know, how do we do it without, how do we, how do we measure torque? So vehicle energy or, or machine energy is often calculated as the integral of torque times speed. And, and again, we can do this by strain gauging the half shaft, which I has questionable accuracy, but can be done. Um, absolutely, and people at HBM have a lot of knowledge on this. We estimate it from can values, as I showed earlier. And maybe if you don't have the ability to calibrate this, this is difficult. You can do it, but is it done or is it done right? Um, we can estimate from currents. Again, you really need to have the machine to do this. this. This becomes really difficult if you don't have a really good characterization of the machine. If you do, you can say my current's 100 amps, my torque is you know, at 12 newton meters. Um, wheel force transducers, I think this is a great way to go. But again, maybe you don't want people to know that you're testing a vehicle. Uh, maybe you're, you're looking at some competitor vehicles and, and wheel force transducers don't fall off trees. So I, I have a nice proposal for you. Now, in my little graphic here, I've got a DC bus energy and an AC um, inverter energy. And we can look at the different in energy to get losses, but where's vehicle energy? Just kind of a corny graphic. Um, but the one thing that, that with energy is that torque really isn't the question. Torque is an awesome tool to figure out energy. Torque is a great thing to understand machine performance. I'm not saying we don't need torque. I'm saying if energy is our concern, we have other methods of calculating it without torque. And vehicle energy can be calculated from the integral of tractive force times velocity. I know velocity, what's, what's tractive force? I'm an electrical guy, so, so everybody here probably knows tractive force, but, but for me, this was a, a new thing I was learning. Um, it's really the rolling resistance of the vehicle plus the air resistance of the vehicle plus the gradient resistance of the vehicle. So what's my incline, what's my pitch yaw roll, and then the inertia of, of the vehicle. And, and with, you know, some simple kind of static calculations um, where we take in things like air density or what's the drag of the vehicle, things that we can calculate or, or have a pretty good estimate of, um, especially for the OEM. Uh, we, we can put in our equation and just have other things like pitch, roll, and yaw. We can get from, from a really good GPS or a, 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 a wow, well, um, yeah, a, a nice set of accelerometers um, to really start to understand what, what's my vehicle status. And then the inertia, um, that, that's a derivative term of acceleration. So, you know, our, our tractive power is our, this tractive force which we can calculate with, with really nice GPSs and really nice accelerometers and, and um, terrestrial GPS possibly. You know, we, we offer a GPS that, that will give you pitch, yaw, roll, uh, and, and extremely accurate speed acceleration. And we just multiply that by velocity, take the integral of this term, and, and we have vehicle energy. Um, so I learned about this from friends of mine at um, ENCODE. ENCODE is a software division of HBK. Um, they do some really awesome stuff on vehicle measurement. Uh, the, the usage they were using for this was a little different, but, but we found out that it works extremely nicely for electric vehicles as well. So they can accurately take those measurements of vehicle speed, incline, pitch yaw roll, road service, mass, drag, um, a lot of these coming from a GPS. They can also take the electrical measurements, those very accurate electrical measurements, and feed those in to their software. You might ask, well, Mitch, why are you doing this post-process? Well, um, in all reality, to, to really accurately do this with derivative terms and, and estimation and all that, um, post-process software is superior. We can do a lot in the real time, but when you start talking about derivatives and, and a little more advanced calculation, it's, it's probably best to take it offline. Um, but we can do it to some extent live, so, so it's not out of the question, it's just better if you do it in the post, um, especially if you have multiple data sources. So we can bring that in, we can run it through um, GPS analysis, analysis, we can bring in metadata, so like, is it raining outside, um, what, what's my road condition, which fortunately for a lot of us is going to be concrete, and then we can run that through to do some really cool energy calculations using GPS data and, and really physical measurement. And that's, again, to get vehicle energy and, and understand the losses throughout the system. 
really cool stuff there, probably largely used from, from sensors and equipment you already have, plus some of our, our eDrive equipment and some intelligence, um, intelligence coming from software. And an example of this, and this was actually an example done with vehicle GPS data, so definitely lower lower grade data than would come with a with a higher end GPS. And you know, coasting down a, a 1% incline um, on 125 kilowatt system, they were off by plus or minus two kilowatts. So so actually very accurate coming from not so great sensors. Um, and they also ran a similar test, you know, a zero to 62 miles per hour, 9.5 seconds up an incline. And they can look at the force and then power usage um, during these tests. And if we start bringing that to more accurate sensors, more accurate GPSs, we can really increase this value to be extremely accurate. Um, and that, that I think, is, is really cool. Um, you know,